It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, indeed. But uh, look at, listen to this. If you're a bearded man or you love someone who has a beard, you may have recently heard the horrifying news that's been rattling around the internet and also on news media that there may be fecal bacteria in some men's beards out there. Now, with us in studio to clarify the issue and chat about personal hygiene, multimedia health specialist Dr. Darren Green and also two of our very bearded espresso crew, Ashley Murray and Andrew Conradi. Good to have you guys here. Are you good? Good morning. Good morning. How's it, how's it, how's it, how's it good Are you good, Ash? All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And also, Dr. Green will be taking your call, so give us a call on 0839133728. But let's let's get straight into it. Um, you know, the ladies love the beards. Gents love the beards too. But uh, now the news is that you know there may be some not so hygienic stuff in your beard. What is the issue, and how true is this? Well, I think a lot of people are suddenly becoming aware of uh, anti, you know, bas basically the whole sepsis era. So in terms of infection and, and hygiene surrounding grooming and men's grooming in particular, mm -hmm. people are just more outspoken. I mean, when we had the Vikings and the Barbarians, I don't think anyone even No thought one was complaining. Everyone the, was like, yes! Of the raw meat they used to eat and leave the blood <laughs> dripping from their beard. But nevertheless, I think people mm -hmm. are just a lot more aware of, of hygiene and how we spread infections and certainly a big health and wellness craze across the world. Yeah. However, along with that, one must caution on what's called the germ hypothesis, Katleja, because mm -hmm. that's quite important. We're so busy protecting ourselves from exposure and protecting our children from exposure to any form of, of germs that the immune systems actually aren't developing as well as they should in the early stages of life. In other words, your exposure to, for example, playing in, in, in sand and that kind of thing. Some parents really try to protect every move of their kids, protecting them from even picking out, a, you know, picking some grass, for example. I hear you. So I hear we, have you. To, we have to look at the balance of, of things. But with beards in particular, you can imagine the big issue is obviously the, the, the hygiene around exactly. food and, and foreign bodies getting stuck in the beard. And I'm sure... The gentleman can tell us exactly what uh, what actually does get stuck in the beard and what makes it difficult Ashley, to maintain. Ashley, do you want to tell us what gets stuck in your beard? Well, I mean, obviously... Well, firstly, you, you just scratched before you answered that question. <laughs> Is that an indication of something that we should be concerned about? No, of? no. Um, I think, like, for me, the worst food to eat when you grow a beard is couscous. Couscous? Cause, uh, yeah. <laughs> we've always got couscous falling off that fork and then inevitably lands in your beard. Mm. Andrew, what about you? Do you have mm. problems with couscous or are you more burger kind of guy? Because your beard is a lot shorter, well, you know. Yeah, kinda... I mean, I used to have, a, like, up until like a month ago, a big beard. Yeah. Um, I think just saucy stuff, like burgers or pasta. Yeah. Yeah. That's you with the yeah, big beard there, mm. big rocking beard. The, 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 <laughs> the specs as well. <laughs> but I can, the major concern is that, like, the, the transfer of germs, uh, you know, yes. between people as well. I mean... Well, yeah. your facial hair is coarse hair, you know. It's like, it's like a scourer on the, on the dishwasher sink. So if you think about it, <laughs> a great traps, description. A t <laughs> you can obviously straighten it and comb it out and give it a nice side bath. But in terms of, of the ability to catch germs, yeah. you know, that coarse hair traps dirt and it traps things. So, you, you know, hygiene is imperative because what happens is you have food staying behind, you have organisms growing on that food, aye, aye, aye. and then along with that, then you have an overpopulation or colonization of mm. different bacteria and germs. And what do we do with our hands? We love touching the beard. That's, that's, the, that's the thing, as isn't it? As we, all, as we think. <laughs> every day, every day. <laughs> but have you guys had any concerns with, with skin conditions or infections as a result of, of your beard or since growing your beard? No, the only thing I find that uh, sometimes happens is that um, your chin gets a little dry and a little flaky. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, I haven't had any irritations or concerns other mm. than that. And Andrew, you're all right? Mm, yeah, I'm all good. No, okay. I haven't experienced anything. Well, clearly your grooming techniques must be, you know, obviously polished and perfected. They do look good, I mean. Yeah, I you know, Ashley, I don't know what. Yeah, I think course. I think guys that suffer from, for example, ingrown hairs when they shave, that's a big a big problem. Yes. Yeah. Often are, are, are encouraged by the dermatologist to let their hair grow a little bit yes. before shaving so frequently, because the skin becomes sensitive and chafed and mm -hmm. you then get the rash. Now, we will be continuing with this chat just mm -hmm. after the break, but please give us a call on 83 as we continue our chat about personal, uh, personal hygiene. We'll be right back when we introduce you to one of our young sports stars right here on Expresso.